Hey everybody, this is Dr. Clark Shearla with Northwestern Specialists in Plastic Surgery, and I'm here to talk to you today about a concept that we have been uh, seeing more and more with all of the recent concern around breast augmentation, breast implants, and that is the concept of an on-block resection. Uh, this is uh, a, the French spelling of the word E-N-B-L-O-C. So uh, we've been getting a lot of uh, requests for this particular surgical technique. Um, just for those of you who are not familiar with it, on-block refers to a surgical technique of removing an implant and its capsule all together without rupturing or damaging uh, either of those components. First things first, you know, uh, a, a breast implant, this is a silicone breast implant, uh, it's a sample, not for human uh, implantation. The clear part in here is the uh, implant. And when this is put into a human body, uh, like any foreign object, your body is gonna create a capsule of scar tissue around it. Your body reacts to any foreign uh, material by creating a layer of scar tissue around it. In the case of breast implants, this is called the capsule. And so uh, here I'm using this little piece of kind of stocking mesh uh, dressing to kind of simulate what that capsule is like. Now in your body, of course, this would be completely surrounding the implant, 360 degrees. Um, and because we know that silicone is a safe, non-reactive hypoallergenic substance, that's why it's used for medical implants, uh, and it has been for many, many years, um, we know that your body will tend to respond to it in a way that's relatively safe, comfortable and um, can be pretty stable long term. Indeed, many people have implants in their bodies for decades without any issues. Ideally, this capsule is typically soft but strong. Um, there are times when it can become a little bit stiff and tough like leather, and it can even become uncomfortable. That's called capsular contracture. Other times when the capsule becomes really weak and flimsy uh, and it has the all the strength of wet toilet paper, it's really just, you know, a uh, gossamer uh, substance that really doesn't provide any structural support. And that's when you can end up with issues like implant malposition where the implant shifts around a lot. When you lay down, it flops to the side or uh, even the dreaded uniboob, uh, otherwise known as synmastia. So there are kind of issues that can arise with the human body and its response to the implants. And we are well versed in uh, handling these. We perform a lot of breast reconstruction revisions as well as cosmetic breast revisions here at uh, Northwestern Specialists in Plastic Surgery. And it's definitely something that we have a lot of tools at our disposal to help patients with, whether it's capsular flaps, reworking the capsule, capsulectomy, capsulotomy, capsulorophy, um, newer uh, prosthetic materials like uh, Galaflex prosthetic mesh, for instance. Uh, there's always a, an evolving toolbox to help our patients that are having difficulty with their capsules. Now, in response to some of the recent fears that have arisen around some of the, uh, the top topics um, in the news around breast implants, including the Allergan recall, different types of texturing, breast implant associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma or BIA ALCL, as well as breast implant illness. Uh, and for a review of any of these topics, please make sure you check out our video on these five topics that we posted recently. Uh, you can find that on our YouTube channel as well as on our implant info on our website. Um, we'll put a link that, to that somewhere up here. The concerns around these have led to a lot of women looking for the removal of their implants replacement of their implants, treatment of the capsule, removal of the capsule. There is this concept that if you remove the implant and its capsule completely, we're using the minimal amount of trauma and the minimal amount of disruption, you minimize the risk of somehow spilling the contents and resulting in contamination of the tissue, which can help minimize long-term consequences of the implant as these patients are experiencing the symptoms. Now, we do not in any way want to be dismissive of any symptoms that patients are experiencing. As we discussed in the breast implant illness um, video, there is a very complex interplay between the implant and a patient's anatomy and their physiology. It is absolutely true that there, no, no one can ever fully understand the complexities of this interaction and you can never really rule out anything as being possible. However, here at Northwestern Specialists in Plastic Surgery, we really do want to be proponents of uh, factual, sound, solid, uh, evidence-based practice of medicine. And it is important that whereas there are very sound oncological principles involved in the treatment of cancers, where uh, removing uh, tissues and cancerous tissues and malignant tissues completely and being very careful to obtain clear margins. Um, those have been demonstrated through years and decades of sound scientific studies and experiments in the surgical oncology literature. A lot of this is still a very evolving and nascent field. And there really is no solid uh, scientific evidence that the on block resection is somehow protective of long-term consequences. More importantly, that if your surgeon does not 
perfectly perform an on-black resection and some of these cells or some of this material spills during the procedure that you are at any increased risk for any complications long-term uh, whatsoever. So all that being said, what do we do here at Northwestern? Well, um, an on-block approach can make sense uh, sometimes. Having the implant in the pocket, as you can kind of see, that's that's the purpose behind this kind of demo uh, visual aid that I have here. If the implant is in the pocket and in the capsule, it does help to stretch out the capsule and make it nice and tight, and it helps to kind of separate this from the rest of the patient's tissues. So there are certainly times when, from a surgical standpoint, it's actually easier and safer and more efficient for us to keep everything intact as we're doing the resection. One thing that you'll notice though is, and this is something that often comes up in surgery, is that as we get past the apex of the implant, the top of the mountain, and now we're going over into the dark side of the moon, as it were. This is the part you can't really see. This becomes much more challenging and difficult to keep everything all together. And what you can see is, as you get about halfway in, if you then carefully and completely remove the implant and all the material, this allows the capsule to deflate and allows us to then see the backside much more easily where we can then remove the rest of that capsule as safely and efficiently as possible through the smallest incision possible, um, causing the least amount of damage to your natural uh, healthy tissues uh, and resulting in the least amount of deformity. And so we really feel like since there is no definitive scientific evidence to prove that on block is necessarily better than uh, any other approach. And the important thing is getting out a damaged implant or getting out diseased capsular tissue. We really wanna do this in as efficiently and safely a, a way as possible. And often that's going to be on block, but sometimes it's not. And when it's not, we are always gonna make our best judgment as to what we think is ultimately best for you in terms of your incision, your uh, the deformity of your existing tissues, your ultimate long-term safety. That's just our approach. There are a lot of great um, uh, surgeons out there who do feel differently. This is an area of evolving opinion. Uh, and so we do, al as always, recommend that our patients do their homework, seek out multiple opinions, try to find a surgeon, a board certified surgeon with experience in this area whose thought process resonates with your own when you're seeking out this uh, this type of surgery this is typically very challenging surgery revision surgery is always more difficult than primary surgery it's one of the most um, uh, interesting and uh, intellectually stimulating components of my practice uh, I really enjoy revision work that we do here in Northwestern because we are here at a major academic teaching center we do see a lot of that a lot of that kind of funnels in here from other areas but it's very challenging Challenging and we take it very seriously. And so we're always trying to provide our patients the best, most evidence-based procedures that's gonna uh, provide them the best results, the safest results for their long-term well-being and aesthetic outcome. Uh, so hopefully that answered some questions about on-block resection for you. If you didn't and you have any other questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel, click that little bell so that you're notified for future videos as they do come up. We do try to publish these sort of timely videos in a very timely fashion as we notice uh, issues in the news. And uh, thanks for watching. Hey guys, thanks for watching our video. Make sure to subscribe, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and check out our next video.